I finally have time to record a video. Yay! Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a thousand and one book countdown for you. If you're not familiar with the thousand and one book countdown, I will leave a card up here for you where you can go and check out the original video. But basically I'm reading books off of the thousand and one books you must read before you die list. And I'm just slowly making my way through that massive project, which I made bigger because I combined all versions of that book together, which ended up being 1,315 books. It's a project and it's a passion project of mine. It's just the thing that I love to do as far as crossing off lists. I found some amazing books and I found some stinkers on that list as well, but I'm still having a lot of fun. So I hope you consider giving me a subscribe and sticking around and seeing how far I get on this massive project of mine. It has been a little bit since I posted a video, um, and now about a week and a half by the time this one goes up. Things have been incredibly crazy, topsy-turvy, um, lots of appointments for print parents and work things, and it just, everything got away from me. So I apologize for not having a video um, a little earlier than this one, but you know, it is what it is. And I have a great thousand and one update for you. So yay! Uh, but for today, what I will go ahead and do is put up the numbers, which are 883, which is my main total out of the 1300 and 15 books I have left and the bottom number which is 43 every year at the beginning of the year I pre-select 52 books and then I just try and get that number to zero I have not been successful in that I will read other books and not the books that I pre-selected at the beginning of the year it's a whole thing <laughs> so and this year I am definitely behind so we'll see how we'll see how the year goes but my update for today is great for both numbers so I'm very very excited for today. The first book that I have for you is A Tale of Love and Darkness by Amos Oz. This book was originally published in 2002. The first English translation wasn't until 2004. I actually had this book on my TBR in 2021, the first year I started doing my channel, and I didn't get to this book. And part of the reason why is because I thought this was a novel, and so when I was reading it, I was just not getting into the story. It was a little confusing. And then I come to find out this year that this is actually a memoir, and it makes so much more sense as a memoir than it did as a novel. So Amos Oz was a writer, um, a teacher, I believe. He had over 40 books published. He was also, a, a, I believe, a professor at one point. Very, very interesting person. He grew up in Jerusalem post-World War II, which was a very tumultuous time in the region. And his life was fascinating. The way the book is told, the way the memoir is told, is not chronological. So if you know my videos at all or watch my content, you may know I don't typically like a story that's not chronological, but this memoir was in incredible. So many components of this book made me laugh. There was a component in it that made me cry. I just was so enthralled by this. It's actually also a good one for Mental Health May because there is a mental health component of this and just a lot of very difficult times that Amos went through when he was growing up. It does go a little bit into his later life uh, as well. It also talks about his grandparents. It talks about his parents. He lost his mother at a very young age and it was incredibly heartbreaking, um, this, that part of the story, because you get a little peek at what happens to her and then it goes on to something else and then it comes back and it gives you another little peek at it and then it goes away again and then it gives you another little peek of it and then it ends with what actually happened to his mother. And it was it was really, really difficult, um, really hard to read parts of it. Uh, there was a, There's a lot about the Holocaust and about the guilt that survivors had where their whole town was obliterated by the Nazis and it, you know, everything that went along with that as a survivor. And it was, it was very, very moving, this whole memoir. 
There were some hilarious moments. A lot of them for me centered around his grandfather. His grandfather, whose wife passed away when he was in his 70s, discovered the joy of sex when he was 70 and had all of these different women that he was going around with and um, absolutely hilarious. He also, at the age of 93, sat the author down to have a talk. Um, and, you know, the author at the time had two two daughters that were in their 30s. And it just so much of that made me chuckle. I really love the, the grandfather. There's also a very big component of this that is about books and about reading and authors and the love of reading and how he got addicted to reading. All he wanted to do was read. He didn't want to do anything other than that. He also has a great story of when his dad first gave him space uh, for on the bookshelf for his books and how he lined them up and how his dad was like, no, that's not the right way to line those books up. So incredibly well done, an absolutely intriguing individual, wonderful memoir. If you're looking for a memoir for Mental Health May, if you're looking for a memoir for Nonfiction November, I would highly recommend this one. It, I gave it five stars, much to my surprise. It's rated 4.5, 4.6, I think, on Goodreads, and it deserves it. It is an absolutely phenomenal mem memoir, absolutely incredible. So. A Tale of Love and Darkness by Amos Oz. Yay! So this book, with this book, we get to go from 883 to 882, and it was thankfully on my 2023 list, so it gets to go from 43 to 42. I actually didn't have this on a TBR. I picked it up because I needed um, an audiobook, and I have this one. I had this one as an audiobook, so I was reading it, listening to it, and it was just absolutely incredible. So, yep, a tale of love and darkness. All right, I wish I could say the second book that I have for you today is as successful. This appears to be a book very much that is a kind of a love or a hate book from what I'm reading on the reviews. There are a number of very positive reviews for this book. Unfortunately, this book did not work for me very, very well. And the book is The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. This book was originally published in 1984, and um, Kundera actually has several books on the 1001 Book Countdown. I've read another one, The Joke, um, which I actually enjoyed quite a bit more than this one. This book features a f several main characters. There's Sabina, there's Thomas, and there's Teresa, and they are kind of all in this weird relationship with each other. Um, Thomas is mar marries Teresa, Sabine is there as a mistress and sleeping with a, a, you know, a wide variety of different people. Uh, and it really is a deep dive into their relationships with each other and you infidelity is featured in this quite a bit there is a lot of like sex in this book as well which is probably why it's led to it being one of the more banned books that have, have been out there i think i picked this up off of a banned bookshelf however i just did not get along with the writing style i just didn't want to have any more conversations about how thomas's hair um smelled like another woman's crotch it just was like no and i i had some kind of some sympathy for teresa when i when after reading through her backstory there was some really positive moments in that it's like okay i have some insight into who she is and why she might stay with tomas tomas is a womanizer philanthropist and uh, just absolutely uh, just a, kind of a despicably written character for me uh, and I just I just didn't like it uh, I I had a really hard time with how the women were represented the relationships were represented but I have to say that it lost me almost towards the end at a component where it starts talking about literal shit and like Mm, no, no. And then there was something about a menstrual kind of thing in there. And I just went, mm -mm. no, I did finish it. I did this as a buddy read and we both very much felt very much the same. If it hadn't been a buddy read, I don't know if I would have kept going with it. I, I probably would have because it's on the thousand and one list. And it is, like I said, some people love this. There's some deeper philosophical meanings of this book. There's you know, the hat has a meaning behind it or why the hat is there. Uh, there's a lot to it, but I I just couldn't get past how it was written. I just struggled. I was on the struggle bus with this one. It is not my favorite book. I found it pretty unbearable in places, especially the end. Ugh, 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 ugh. Yeah. 
Um, please let me know in the comments if you've read this, what you thought of it. I do know of a couple people where I read their reviews and they also, um, also did not, uh, did not like it, so that was interesting to me, but there are a large number of five-star reviews for this particular book. I wonder, too, if this is a book that just hasn't aged well. Much like Rabbit is Rich didn't age well for me, I don't know that this one aged well for me. So, you written in the early 80s, yeah, philandering, you know, a philandering male, you know, women not represented really in the best light, just, you know, bigger, deeper philosophical meaning that went over my head. So I, you know, sometimes if there's a book with big, deep philosophical meanings in it, I, I just don't necessarily get it or understand the appeal to it. And this sadly was that, but I do, I understand what the hat means now. Yes. Um, but that is the unbearable lightness of being. I'd really love to hear your thoughts about this particular book in the comments. Um, with this book, I go from 882 to 881 and thankfully it was on my 2023 list so that number gets to go from 42 to 41 and that is all I have from a number of books I've completed however I have so many books that I am in the middle of right now I have my book club pick which is Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood as you can see there is a bookmark in it I'm a little over a third of the way through so far and I'm actually really enjoying this one I got slightly distracted in there um, by an arc that I got approved for and I dropped everything and went and read it but I've come back to it now <laughs> and this particular book I feel like the main character who is Grace, I feel like she's such an unreliable narrator. I'm really curious when I get farther in it to find out more. It is really fascinating. It is a great one for Mental Health May because there is a large mental health component of this particular book as well, determining whether Grace is insane or not. And so I thought that that's really an interesting tie and I didn't plan on that one. But again, look at this beautiful cover. I'm reading this as an ebook. I'm not necessarily reading it from this beautiful beautiful copy. So, but that one I have in progress. I have also started The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. This is for, of course, Miserable May uh, and the Thomas Hardy read-along or read-a-thon that, that is being hosted by Scott over at Gumbowder Fiction and Plot and Gemma from Gemma Books. And I am, as you can see here, through part one and part two of this particular book. And this is like days of our lives in book form. It feels very much like that. This person was interested in this person and then not interested in them and wants to go over here because this person wanted that person now they don't want them anymore it's like drama 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 on the page i love this little cute little cover though this little book it's very very tiny uh it is a very fast read and i'm doing this as a buddy read with kristen from enter the book so this has been great and and i have started the Man Without Qualities by Robert Musil. As you can see, there is a fantastic bookmark in here. I'm on page 500 of this volume. And that is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing that I am this far. I would be ecstatic if this is the only volume that I had to read. Um, but this is volume one of two. So volume two is this one here. Oh, boy another thousand pages so I have around 1200 pages left to read I've made a huge amount of progress I'm about one-third of the way through the whole thing but I am slowly making my way through this one um, I'm doing this as a buddy read with Greg from another bibliophile reads and Fraser Simon and the funny thing is is there's not a lot to talk about in this massive book there's a lot of philosophy a lot of characters a lot of discussion, but not a lot actually happening, which I find really fascinating as well. So I have three books on the go. I have another Buddy Read starting next week. I think May is going to be an amazing month for knocking down some numbers off of my countdown. Yes. But right now, that's all I have for you. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments down below what you thought of either of the books that I have read or any of the ones I'm currently reading. I would love to hear from you. Um, I hope to be back to kind of a normal filming schedule, but I'm really at the mercy of how my parents are doing and how work is going right now. And it has all been challenging <laughs> is what I would say and uh, hopefully it calms down fairly soon but uh, other than that yeah other than that everything's well <laughs> so um, as always like comment and subscribe and until next time everyone thanks bye